Good afternoon, party peeps. All right, now, oh, my phone, of course. And I'm going to just let you know right now, <laughs> I am unapologetic about staying in my rubber duck jammies. So, if you don't like rubber ducks, sorry. <laughs> if you don't like wearing your jammies all day, I'm sorry. I'm just super comfortable today and I have repairmen coming and I've had to do a lot of registration and speak to a lot of people in regards to surgery. So I woke up like this and I still look like this. So moving on. This morning during chat watching Totally Tiffany on Crafter's Companion, I did get, um, see, there's the, um, my angel stop with the ums. There was someone who asked if I could go ahead and demonstrate how I used this envelope maker on the original big one board that I had ordered from Crafter's Companion many, many years ago. It really does do everything. All of these holes here are for bows and you can make them different sizes. You can put the newer plates here across this and you can do new embossing on this side. You can do embossing on this side of all different shapes and sizes. You can also put your new boards here. There are two pegs at the bottom, excuse me, at the bottom that you can rest your new boards against and so to say that Sarah was ahead of her time as I did yesterday she truly was you have all these beautiful embossing designs that you can use she does explain how to use each embossing tool where to use each embossing tool which size embossing tool to use and so this really was a fantastic it is a fantastic tool to have in your arsenal especially for those times when you're really frustrated you're trying to do something and it just doesn't seem to be working like yesterday the envelope box i was trying so hard to do the math with the we are memory keepers and even with this one because the instructions do come on how to make several different types of envelopes, but still it didn't seem to be giving me the complete numbers that I needed in order to create the size of envelope box that I needed. This envelope box I'll be working with, and it is just this small section here. And if you can see, there's a small shelf right in here and so you will i'll get to this but this little shelf is what gives you the amount of height you want in your box right now i can i've only been able to figure out how to do half an inch on here i am sure that there are much deeper size boxes that you can make because you can make an entire box on here. It's in the instructions with the original instructions and the original DVD that came with this tool. So let me just go ahead and open up my big one. And I do have four double-sided extra plates. And so like I showed you, it has the extra feet on the opposite side. And you just go ahead and you tuck them in right between the two feet here on the bottom. And then you just go ahead and you emboss away. You, here's, a, here's the embossing pattern for a tall box. You cut out two of these, you trace it, you emboss it, you do whatever you want with it, you cut it out, and away you go. And you've got your own carrier box. You don't have to do anything. In fact, there's a stylus that will cut the paper pretty much all the way through for you. So they are nice to have. You can make tags on here. If I were to turn this around, you would be able to see that they've got 
envelopes and there's a hole for a tag and here's a circle and over here's a heart I mean you really can do anything with these boards this is a little purse box that you could make they they just go on and on they're a lot of fun there are a lot of neat ways to try doing different things and not having to have a special machine but to kind of go back to where we all started which was the fussy cutting and the tracing and drawing only with this um i'm going to open and show you the tools and you don't have to use all of the old school techniques now even on the inside there are boards when you open it up and this has four different sizes of paper it also has embossing down the side you could make those your edges and over here it's got different sizes of shapes that you could use and inside here basically is just where you want to try and store your extra pages and in fact it's where i keep all of mine they fit perfectly right in here i just lift it up i close it and there you go everything is compact and put away so there are old videos out there of sara using this board and explaining exactly how it all works and boy, can you tell that she has, she was young when she came out with this tool. And it actually was, it actually was, she was ahead of the curve. And it was fantastic to have this so long ago to use when I couldn't afford anything else. When my children were little and now I'm older and my children are grown and now I have my granddaughter and I make cards for her and I've got great friends and family that I also make cards for. So this tool will give you everything and anything you want. If you get a chance to order it, I would definitely say order it. So what I was saying is it comes with different styluses. So I was using this stylus. I'm sorry, my camera, I had to move because it needs to charge while I'm videoing. So this has two different size tips. You've got a larger tip on here. And this one is great for the, the embossing of larger lines for like the boxes. But if you're going to be embossing an envelope, you want the smaller, the smaller side of that embossing tool, which is the side that I use. And then you can use the sides of these to burnish use as a bone folder and burnish your lines you just push it down and away you go and it works great there is one that is more fine detail finely detailed and it is even smaller and it will cut your paper for you and on the other end this this end here is even smaller yet it's thinner as you can see and it will and it can cut your embossing designs out for you so you really don't even need a craft knife you can pretty much do it on your own and this set comes with that so i'll take out the the stylus i was using you also get these three little pins here and these are for making bows and those are actually on the back which i showed you these these holes here and they will actually, you know what, I'm going to have, sorry, I'm going to have to move the camera back. That way I'm not constantly bringing it back and forth. So you can place the holes anywhere here and you can make a single bow, a double bow, a triple bow, a huge bow, a teeny tiny little bow. You can make bows of all sizes on this and it really is simple, simple to do. In here, she also includes a paper cutter with this, which is a ruler as well. You can see the numbers there. And if you open, <clears throat> excuse me, and she also includes a little mouse cutter. And if you can see there, there's 
just a glint of silver and that is a standard just a razor blade that you could probably go to any spouse uh, hardware store just go get your your low your utility knife really and just replace the blade inside of it it does have i think it has two positions so that you can have it out further and then you can bring it in and then the blade is not so you bring it in and the blade is no longer showing and so then you move it to the marker on the second side of the razor blade here and then it sticks out just enough for you to be able to do your cutting so the easiest way to do that <clears throat> boy i'm sorry my throat is all it's allergy season your ruler and your cutter fit in here and it's great let me just oh, dang it i don't have any extra i'm in my craft studio dang it i have no paper okay here's a sticky note it's just simple uh demonstration for you so you put it in here, you decide where you want it on your ruler, you go ahead, you hold it down, you put in your little mouse knife, you pull it across, and there you go. You've now cut your paper in half with this little mouse knife without hurting yourself, plus you have your ruler, and it stays in place because it's locked into the center of the big one, which doesn't allow it to close. So you've got a lot of uses that you can do with just this one box as you can see it also comes with a book and i was flipping through this in my my massive uh amazing troubles and adventures and and vela box making yesterday but there's much to refer to in this guide and it's fantastic and if you've got a dvd player most everybody does it includes a dvd and sarah goes through this entire box and what you can do with it in order to make what you'd like to make so you put your tool away your ruler oh it's upside down it does have to go a certain way so that it locks into place so the lifting the the hinge must go on this end so let me just get down <clears throat> and we can go ahead and we can take a look through the book the catalog it gives you an introduction to the tool itself it also tells you all about it how to do the bow maker the box maker the envelope making your accessories decorative embossing how to make a pop out card it's got it all in here it explains it all and it goes through instructions basic half fold cards gate fold cards um scrapbooking sizes she has in here scrapbooking sizes u.s letter size there's a line that actually says u.s letter size because she's in the uk Thinking about her business expanding further than the UK, she included U.S. instructions in here and U.S. measurements. So you can do a trifold, you can do a slim line, you can do an accordion. I'm telling you, this tool can do just about anything and everything you ask it to do. You can do a jump up card and you can do a pop out card. You can do K cards. It shows you how to do the bow making with the three little pegs. Basic box technique. You can have a shaped box, triangular, boxes with four sides, diamond shaped boxes. I just, it goes on and on. You can do apertures in the center and wedge boxes, envelope making instructions, um, envelope boxes, and so this is the pages that we're going to be focusing on the most. So the envelope boxes, and these are the measurements that we have for some of the most basic card sizes that we use when, as crafters, we make cards. So for an A9 envelope, which is to fit 
half the size of U.S. letter paper, five and a half by eight and a half, you need an 11 and a quarter inch square, and you use the lines marked on the back, and I told you I thought they went through H, and they do. So you would be using lines F first, and then H second. So let's choose a size, because there are different kinds of different sizes of cards. So we can use number 10 slim to fit a card one third the size of the U.S. letter paper, which is three and two thirds by eight and a half. You use a blank size of 10 inch square and use lines D and H. So let's see, to make to fit a card which is exactly eight inch square, you need a blank size of paper that is 12 and a half inches square. Well, we only have 12 by 12 here. You can buy larger. I do have larger and it was from Crafter's Companion. It's very expensive. And unfortunately, I'm not going to be using that today. So we can do an A4, A6 card announcement photo you need an eight and five eighths inch square so let's do that because we'll be using lines d and f so you take your big one ultimate here and it is lettered and let me <laughs> i can't see. i don't have my glasses on doing upside down and backwards like sarah a, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H is all the way down here at the bottom. And then the letters are also up here at the top of the lines. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So those will be the lines that we're using. We're going to be be. <laughs> oh boy, I can't talk. Okay, we're going to be using lines D and F. So... Let me grab some paper and I will cut it down so it is eight and a half inches square. That's the wrong guillotine. Let me hope that it doesn't fall off my cart. The large guillotine. And let's measure out our large guillotines of course when you go to grab it and use it why does it want to work it wouldn't work wouldn't want to work when you're using it right why would that happen that would be awful to be able to use your tools when you need them hmm. all right so i've got some dollar store craft paper here that i have had Oh, I think I bought this probably back in 2004 or 2005. It has never been open. It has been sitting around waiting for me all these years. And I found it going through all of the stuff that was needing to go into my dream of a craft room one day where I could sew and do all of my crafts. And here it is, my daydream and it's here and it's on my door and every time i walk up to my door it says never quit your daydream and you know what i didn't and now it became reality so if you think you don't have enough room or you feel like it'll never happen it can you just have to be honest enough with yourself even if you're on a budget like i was that you can make it happen if you truly are interested in making it happen. Okay, sorry about that little rant. I went off base here. So, on our, we're going to double check our measurements before we cut. So, we want the 4x6 envelope card. Use blank sides. Use 8 and 5 8 inch square. Use lines D and F. So we want to cut that to eight and five eighths. So I'm really bad with my eight. So I know there's that eight and a half is four. So you gotta go a little over and that's five eighths. 
So eight and five eighths. We've taken that off. Now we can turn this one around and we can see if Angel can make five eighths again. And I believe I can. And so this one will be just a standard card. It will just be a standard envelope. And then I'll show you what I did yesterday in order to make it an envelope box. I just I just made the measurements a little bigger and I changed the lines. So on here to just make the envelope itself, we just need to use two lines and I'm going to use the smaller end of this tool of this embosser for the envelope. And we need lines D and F. I double check, triple check before I emboss any lines at all. So D first, F second, because you do need them to cross. So D and then F. And then you go back and you go to D again. And then you go to the next corner and you go back to F. And I always make sure I'm in the right line at the top and at the bottom. So that's as difficult as it is to make an envelope. Let's go the other way. Let's have the bright yellow on the inside. So you just, now that you've put your lines down, you've embossed them with this tool. Oh, look, I missed a corner. <laughs> <laughs> I must have I must have gone on the wrong one. Uh, so this one I missed the wrong line. I did the wrong line. Oops! Don't we all have an oops every now and again while we're crafting, especially when we're doing a demonstration for somebody who asks? So you have your regular. This would fit a four by six card. You could go ahead and make it. Put it in there and put it in the mail, send it on its merry way. Okay, so to show you what I did to get my envelope box to be just the half inch, I took my paper and I cut it down to the sizes that were as close to everything else that Memory Keepers and what Sara had written down would fit my card, which was about five by six and a half. And I went through all of these and none of them seemed to be working. So I went and I cut my papers to a nine and think nine and one eighth and actually let me think that again nine and one eighth and eight inches so I didn't use these because I was so frustrated at the end I basically threw it out and you can follow the instructions here for the envelop boxes place your card blank onto the board with the corner Position at the locator point and score the first indicated groove. Drop the cardstock down into the lip of the marked envelope box and score the same line. This gives you double line in order to make your box. At each corner where the lines intersect, cut out a small notch, then fold in two sides and apply double-sided tape to the bottom edges. Fold the bottom up to meet the top. Now you've created a neat envelope box. To help, and that's, that's, that's as difficult as it is. And so let me just go ahead and we'll make a card. So I'll use the same the measurements that I used yesterday. And I used nine and 
and eight and four, five. I think I said eight and five eight. Okay, Dollar Tree card stock. Now, if I mess this up, we're all in trouble. <laughs> It means I can't, I can't even follow simple instructions. So the lines that I used yesterday, I made sure that they intersected. Now that we have all of these fancier boards, they give us all the instructions. But yesterday, I couldn't get the instructions, so I kind of guessed. And to make an envelope box, you're basically going to put your paper. Let me see if I can get this closer up for you guys. Um... Oh, no. All right. Well, I'll just bring it a bit closer because I want to show you on here that you first will start with your paper up on this ledge. So the paper automatically wants to go to the one at the bottom. There's a lower one. And you can see right above here in the corner, there's this edge. And you want to start on the top edge if you're going to make an envelope box. So you put your paper into that corner there. And then you follow your score lines. And I believe I used D and F yesterday. So let's see. Here's... No, wait a minute. I used E and F. I believe I used E and F. So E... And you just take your stylus and you run it along up to E. Now, to make it with the half inch drop, you just drop it down off of that ledge and you go to E again. Same way we make for the envelopes, only now we're going to make a box. So then you turn your paper and I used F, which is down here. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to emboss or score, whichever you want to take it from the top ledge on F, and then drop it down next to the lip on the bottom and go back to F and emboss or score again. Whichever your choice is, you want to call it, emboss it, score it, whichever. I, I am finding that I calling it scoring just works better for me or embossing not scoring so now we're on the other corner we need to match it up so we need to be on e so we do a line on e we drop it down off of that lip into this corner and then we go back to e and we do it again we go all the way up we have one more corner to do, and you put it up on the top, and we go back to F. Because you want to alternate your corners in order to get the envelope box. So we did the F, we drop it down into this little groove, and then we do F again. And here we go, we emboss F. So... We can now see all of our lines are scored on our paper, and we just need to go ahead and burnish them. So you're going to do the first line first. So here, you're going to do the bottom line first, and then the second line. So I'm going ahead and I'm just, before I'm even cutting, I'm folding these lines over and I have the first line. This is really thin cardstock, so it really doesn't need to be burnished. But if you felt like you needed to burnish it, you can go ahead. The bottom is flat and you just go ahead and you just take it and you just run it right along there and you can burnish that line. And as you can see now, we have the start of an envelope box. It's, it's getting there. So then you go around on all four sides and we do the same thing. We go to the first line 
And then we go to the second line. Sorry if I do it this way, it's on my side and I can see better. There we go. And then we go to line number two. And you just really you just have to kind of push them down. They'll want they'll want to fight you. You're stronger than the paper. Don't fight with the paper. It, it's silly. And you may yell at your paper. I I was yelling at much paper yesterday, <laughs> unfortunately. But I was also very frustrated by the time I was done. So I. I'm going ahead, I'm finishing up these lines. Oh, that one did not quite fold properly. Let's get it in here just right. I want it to line up. All right, and then the second line. All right, so we now have a base for making our envelope box. Some of the lines you will want to cut the corners out of. I found on my Envella box that cutting the corners wasn't beneficial to me in any way. So I just left them square. And then you take your card and you fold it and you make sure to hold that shape of the Envella box on one side and then you take the shape on the other side you do the same thing it's gonna want to fight you and you just hold it to the envelope box the envelope box folds and then again on the other side it may want to fight you don't fight with the paper you win you win every time you can go ahead and you can seal it up and it's ready to go and you can this is not my prettiest this is not my prettiest demonstration um, i would probably have gone this way i probably should have gone this way so that it looks more like a box so this ends up being this envelope box ends up actually being Oh, this corner is going to fight me. Fight me all the way to the bank is what it's going to do. All right. Don't fight with me, corner. This corner does not want to agree with me. This may be one of those times where I spoke too soon. And if you want to, and you find your corners are arguing with you, I went to the farthest sides out on the corners so the second groove that you made or embossed and I cut to that corner and so it's not on groove two down here it's on groove one up here and I went to where it is on groove two over here on this corner Oh my goodness. Okay, so I cut there and I come over here on groove two and I just knead it at the corner. Okay, it's another way to not get your paper to fight with you. And your envelope box will look a, a little happier. And who knows, you might be happier because you didn't have to yell at your envelope box. You go ahead and you take your double-sided tape. I forgot to grab this earlier. And I just went ahead and I put it on the edge of this side of my card. And the edge on this side. And you want to try and hold that box. It's like trying to hold a cardboard box together while you tape it. It's really frustrating, but again, you're stronger than the paper. You can win. So you just push that corner out and then you put the glue on and you put it down. This corner, you do the same. Don't fight with it. 
Don't argue with it. You're you're stronger than the paper. Tell the paper what to do. Go ahead and tape it up. You make sure you've got it scored and laid properly for your box lines to show up. And this one, of course, fights me because I'm doing a demonstration. There you go. And you've got this box and you've got this box. And now you have your Envilla box. No, I did not follow the instructions that were listed in the book. But it does give you the ability to go with what you know hasn't worked and do what you think will work. There's more than one way to make an envelope box. Scoreboards, envelope box makers, we are memory keepers, boards, their envelope makers, their envelope box makers, etc. etc. You there's the big one. You could even measure it out on your own if you'd like, and you would still be able to get a nice envelope box. Mine turned out perfect. My daughter-in-law's card fit in there wonderfully. I just went ahead when I was done and I put a couple of little strips like this on the end and I closed it. That way there's no transferring of the tongue or germs or anything from me to her or from me to my son or my husband or anybody else that wanted to see the Envella box. And because they live seven blocks away, it didn't adhere long, and so it opened very nicely. And if you'd like, if it bothers some people, you can go ahead and you can tuck your corner, this corner of your envelope box. You can tuck it back or you can tuck it forwards, just so that you have a nice, clean, straight line on the edge. Most people would tuck it in. I'm... I don't know. I just, I just want it this way. And then it's being held down either way. It's an envelope box. You can go ahead. You can post it. You can give it away. It's not really difficult. This board makes it extremely easy to make a standard 4x6 envelope that you can just put in the mail for a 2D card. 2D card, you need eight and five eight square piece of paper use lines d and h on the big one ultimate com ultimate crafters companion tool and away you go you just mail that 2d envelope and there you go send it on its way put it in the mailbox you need no extra postage it's just an envelope have a card without an envelope here you go see what size your card is make the envelope, and be on your merry way. This makes it extremely easy to do. And it's all because of this little ridge in this corner here. All it is is a tiny little ridge here and here. You can see here's one line. You go up and there's the other. And it, that's all it is. Those That one little ridge and these lines, A through H, and you can make any size envelope box you want to. You can go by instruction. You can go on your own and go rogue. You can also embellish with these. As I was saying, she did put them on here so that you can embellish, you can emboss, you can... You can put whatever you'd like on your envelope before you sent this off if you wanted to. You could go ahead, you could put a star on the flap of this envelope. And you just take it and you line up. Where's the star at? So you decide where you want to have right in the middle. And you can feel with your tool and you just follow the lines. Okay, so there's one line. I know it's a star shape, so I know I have to go this way. And your tool pretty much just shows you where the actual lines are. And it will tell you where you need to go. 
for some reason mine doesn't like when I go the opposite direction. So you can put a cute little star that's all embossed on your envelope when you fold it up. When it's done, you can put the star on there and it's already embossed in there. You don't have to wait. You can maybe turn this to the, the lighter side versus the darker and then you have it so that it looks like it's embossed and not debossed. I should have said debossed the first time and I did not. My mistake. I own them. This is me and this is my life. And when I speak, sometimes I make mistakes and I'm not going to do a double take. Sorry, I don't have that much time. So you can do these beautiful things if you'd like to go ahead and add some beautiful design elements. Oh, and oh, I forgot to warn you. If you open the wrong end, everything does fall out of its place. Oh, so you do need to be careful when you're opening the wrong side. So, the beautiful embellishments that are on this page, you can go ahead, you can put those on, say, you're making a card and you just have an edge that you want it to be a beautifully embossed edge. This is the stylus that has the smallest tip on it. So... Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry, I have the wrong one. This has the smallest tip on it, and it also has this cutting blade. See how thin that is? So we can go ahead and we can go in here, and we can embellish with this smaller blade, or the smaller ball point, and we find it, and you just let your stylus take you around, where the design is, well, be sure to hold on to your paper though, because <laughs> it can get away from you quickly. Oh my goodness. It goes up and then down and then over and then up. Oh, where is it going? I have a hard time with it because I can't see through the paper. So then goes down. No, it goes over. Then it goes. This is not my best demonstration. I'm just going to say that right now. And I'm putting far too much pressure on here. And so it's trying to cut the paper out. So then you would go back down, etc. Do you get the basic idea? You can go ahead and you can put this lovely line, turn it over, and it's fully embossed. You can see where it tried to cut the paper while I was embossing it, where it went just a little too deep. Um, that's probably because I'm using the smaller size stylus on here. Now, if you did want to cut this off because you didn't think that it was, you know, you thought it was, oh, this is just a little too wide. Well, you do have inches and you do have centimeters included on both sides of this board. So you have inches down here, you have centimeters up here. This is for a box base card. This is uh, for the base of your box and this is for the lid of your box. So you would make your lid box lid here and your box base down here with these. But if your paper is too wide and you think, oh, hey, I don't want my embellishment that far down, you can take the cutting side and you hold your paper in place. You don't even need your cutter. And maybe you want that little torn rough edge. You can go ahead and do that too with this. There's many options with this one particular tool that I ended up using to make an envelope box. It just does so much more. And I don't know that there are any more than four extra boards included, but this gives me eight more box choices on top of all of the boxes that are already available to me and accessible from these lines within the guide 
that Sara included and or on the DVD. So you can, it even says here, you can emboss, you can double emboss, decorative embossing, using the paper trimmer, the mouse cutter, all of it. It's all in here. If you don't have one, and sometimes you just feel like being basic or you just want to do something and you don't want to have to have your electronics out or you just want to make something and you want it to be quiet and you're watching a show, go ahead, get this. I would recommend it to anybody. It's a fantastic tool. Take it with you. It's portable. You can put your papers in here. You, you can see on this side, there's plenty of room for four extra pages. You don't have the four extra pages, that's okay. Here, let's go ahead and we're going to take our envelope with us. We're going to take our design paper. We want to go ahead and put our glue pen in here. Let's see, we need to have some scissors with us when we go. Go ahead, set that in there. Put your styluses in there proper places. Make sure that everything's laying flat on this. And then you just fold it up like this. You take your clip, you have a clasp to hold it shut for you. And now you're ready to go. Take it with you wherever you want. Do your embossing, debossing, embossing, box making, envelope making, anything on the go take it with you the electronic ones are great but what if you're at the car dealership and you're waiting for your oil to be changed you want to do something really quick and simple take this with you it weighs maybe four pounds and that's with the extra plates in without the extra plates in here it weighs maybe four pounds maybe five with all four of the extra plates in here so i really don't have anything bad to say about this tool it is good for everything everything and now we're wherever we are we have our card envelope we have our tape we have our papers we have our scissors with us now we can go ahead and get our stylus and we can go to work and we don't have to disturb anybody because we are using a quiet machine while we're quietly and patiently waiting for something to be done so that is my my quick little introduction for you to the ultimate crafter's companion when i ordered it like i said yesterday it's called the big one now it's called the big one ultimate crafter okay that's okay i don't mind change the name to whatever you'd like call it your carry all silent embossing cutting you don't even need to take scissors. You've got your mouse cutter. You, you can cut whatever you'd like. Unless you'd really like to take your scissors with you. This is a great tool. I highly recommend it. If I could find a way to link a YouTube video of Sara doing this to my channel. And this review from my phone, I would. I'm working on figuring that out because I do not have a working laptop right now. So everything comes straight from my phone, unedited, and here you are. Sometimes that's why they're long. Sorry, I hope I'm getting better. I hope that I answered the questions on how you make envelopes in envelope boxes with the Pro Big One ultimate crafters companion so i hope you all are staying safe and healthy you're inhaling courage and exhaling fear you follow your arrow you remember the beauty in every day and that you never quit your daydream just don't do it
it's not worth quitting on. You have a dream, do it. You're, you're capable. All right now. You all be safe, healthy, and I'll see you. Bye.